For some insight on the upcoming NFL Draft, we're pleased to be joined on the phone now by Marcus Grant, fantasy football editor for NFL.com. You've also seen him on NFL Fantasy Live on the NFL Network. He wears many hats, and he used to work in Fresno. Marcus, because of the coronavirus, the NFL Draft will not be held in Las Vegas. It's going to be held virtually. Does that make your job easier or harder? Um, you know, I think for me, it, it's kind of about the same. I mean, basically, it, it's about just kind of studying the prospects, seeing where they might land. You know, for, certainly for me doing fantasy football primarily, um, it's just more about trying to figure out fit. So it, it, it doesn't make it any different really for me, although we've been joking for weeks now that uh, the NFL draft is probably going to look a lot like some of the fantasy football drafts that people do. Yeah, we've been without live sports for a while now because of the coronavirus. Among the events that were canceled were pro days across the country, including Fresno State's. What impact does that have, not having a pro day? Yeah, that's, that's going to hurt a lot of the guys who aren't the, the top-level prospects, right? I mean, it's, it's one thing for you know guys at the top of the draft, the Joe Burrows, you know, for for Tua Tagovailoa, those guys to not necessarily have a pro day because they're already projected to go very high, and the scouts already like what they see and they know what what these guys are about. Where it hurts are the guys, and so not necessarily the smaller schools, but the guys who are further down the, the picking order on the draft board, the guys uh, who maybe had something to prove, whose tape doesn't necessarily uh, you know get them to the top of the draft board, and, and who need to be seen by scouts to kind of maybe boost their draft stock a little bit. That's where a lot of guys you see kind of move up draft boards is at their pro days when they can work out in front of scouts and get some of that one-on-one -on -one time. That's where it's going to hurt. And that's going to make, I think, this draft a bit – the draft is always a crapshoot. This is going to be even more of a crapshoot because scouts aren't getting that time to see a lot of guys in person that they normally would. They do see about – 300 guys in person right at the Combine, and two guys who were at the Combine this year were representatives of Fresno State, Natani Muti and Michael Walker. Muti, as you know, put on a show during the bench press, 44 reps. What do you think happens with both Muti and Walker during the draft? Well, right now, I think Muti is sort of projected as a, a day two guy, so you're looking somewhere second, third round. Obviously, as you mentioned, that, that bench press performance uh, opened a lot of eyes. I mean, people knew about his strength, but that was sort of next level what he did. Uh, in Indianapolis, and so I think that that specifically helps move him up a little bit. Uh, look, offensive line help is always important uh, in, in, the, in the National Football League, and so I think Mookie's a guy who can certainly do some things, uh, and like I said, could be a second or third round guy. I think for Walker, it's a little bit more of an uphill battle. I mean, he's a guy whose tape doesn't necessarily pop in for a lot of scouts. Uh, he's a guy who certainly can test well, who athletically can do a lot of different things. I think his path to getting in the league uh, if he's not a day three guy, probably more of a free agent, potentially a, a, a undrafted free agent, uh, and a guy who may have to make his mark more as a special teamer before you see him maybe on the field as a linebacker. You know, Marcus Walker played two positions at Fresno State. He was a defensive end and he was a linebacker. He's a guy who had the opportunity to leave after his junior season, thought about it, but came back for his senior season. Muti, of course, chose to leave Fresno State early. And a year ago, I asked you about Jeff Allison and Mike Bell, who made that same choice. Their names were not called during the NFL draft. I know every player is different, but what would you do if you were in the shoes of guys facing a similar dilemma? Should there be some type of universal guideline or checklist here? I mean, I think there should, and I know that, you know, there are resources available, made available to these guys to go and try to figure out what their draft stuff can be, what the realistic possibility of them being drafted and where is. Uh, I mean, look, the, I guess the problem with that is because the draft is so much of a gamble, um, you know, there's no, there's no sure thing, right? You, you can be told that you were projected to be a day two guy or you're projected to be a day three guy. But there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. And so at the end of the day, you do have to sort of weigh all the factors, get to determine what's best for you, what's best you know, for your family, because that, that's definitely a consideration there. Um, you know, I, I know it's a tough decision. I, I don't fault guys either way. If you decide to come back to school, if you decide to go, uh, I, I am not going to fault you one way or another. But it is, it is a tough decision and it is one that, unfortunately, doesn't have any hard and fast rules to help guys make decisions. Lastly, Marcus, at this time last year, you were spot on with regards to Keyshawn Johnson. He was a late round pick to the Cardinals going in the sixth. Arizona has a few young wide receivers and recently traded for DeAndre Hopkins. What do you see Johnson's role being in 2020 and beyond? You know, I, I still like what he can offer down there in, in Arizona. I mean, yes, DeAndre Hopkins is going to be the headliner when you talk about those wide receivers down there. But again, I'll, I'll say what I, you know, what I said last year about, about Keyshawn Johnson. He 
doesn't necessarily, you know, excel in one area. He doesn't just blow you away in one thing, but I think he's very good in a lot of different things. And they took a lot of wide receivers. I mean, they drafted Andy Isabella, who is a speed burner. They drafted uh, Hakeem Butler, who they hope can be that kind of size, speed, freak combination, but, you know, was hurt all of last year. I think Johnson gives them that consistency. He's a good route runner with consistent hands. Uh, and in an offense that is going to spread the, spread it out and throw the football a lot, He's the kind of the guy you want. Like I said, Hopkins, he's the headliner. He's the big-time playmaker. But I think Johnson can develop into that consistent chain mover. I'll, look, a la Larry Fitzgerald, who obviously, you know, if there's the guy you want to learn from, Larry Fitzgerald is among the best. Uh, and so I think Johnson has a, a budding role and can be a very consistent contributor and a quality player down there in the desert. He's Marcus Grant, NFL.com and other platforms. Marcus, thanks so much for the insight. We always appreciate the time. Please stay safe out there. Same to you, Andrew. Take care.